A Dayton man facing death is instead inspired to fight for his life. Holly Samuels discovered one of your neighbors with the courage to create a bucket list during his darkest days. <laughs> Chandler of Dayton is taking a stroll on the dangerous side. Whoa, this is tight too. <laughs> He's setting his fear aside, living the dreams he never thought he'd have. This is great. But Chandler's smile hides an internal battle he's still waging. A year and a half ago, this was his life. January 31st, uh, this is 0908. That was the day Chandler had surgery for a ruptured appendix. But once inside, doctors found a tumor that perforated his colon. They broke the news to his wife, Kathy, in the waiting room. What do you mean, a tumor? And even though I'm in the medical field, I was like, I you know when a tumor is probably cancerous. Cancer, a word that brings people to their knees, but not Phil. I told friends I was going to take 72 hours to be discouraged and then get on with life. So he marched on, up hills and down. Surgeons removed the tumor along with a foot of colon. Then came chemotherapy. But after six treatments, doctors discovered another tumor. Chandler had another surgery, radiation and more chemo. For a break from the battle, Kathy took Phil to the movies to see a couple of his favorite actors, Jack Nicholson and Morgan Freeman. I had no idea what it actually was. You know, I just thought it would be a good one to see. The bucket list focuses on two men forced into friendship as they lie in hospital beds, dying of cancer. My freshman philosophy professor assigned this exercise and called it a bucket list. We're supposed to make a list of all the things we want to do in our lives before we kick the bucket. The movie resonated with Chandler, and he decided a bucket list was exactly what he needed. What's your name, sir? Phil. That's how Chandler ended up sitting in the passenger seat of a NASCAR at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You ever done this before? Nope. That's my first day. Actually, <laughs> here's a Walmart grader yesterday. You heard on television when they say, gentlemen, start your engines. But when they fired up those engines, you, you knew it was real at that point. But before Chandler could speed around the track with a top speed of 175 miles an hour, he first had to make it out of pit row. I thought we were doing about 400 miles per hour, but I'm sure we were doing about 60 or 70. I knew I was having a, you know, an adventure at that point. Adventure was what he was looking for, and he got it. Excellent. But Chandler wasn't done. He wanted to take to the skies, like in the bucket list. She's losing. I hate your rock. The only way I'm coming out on an airplane like that is after I die, if I'm cremated, and someone scatters my ashes. Despite his fears, Chandler climbed into the right bee flyer in Springboro. And he took off, flying the same path through the air as the Wright brothers did 100 years ago. It was exhilarating. Uh, I'd, I'd probably do it again. With his NASCAR ride behind him and his flight done, Chandler was checking the items off his list one by one. Now the things on Phil Chandler's list include dancing with his daughter at her wedding. He did that in August. Chandler's focus on cancer has faded. His eyes are now fixed on family and life's many blessings. You've had three surgeries. Uh, you've had 28 radiation treatments, 12 chemo treatments. Uh, how can you say you're blessed by refocusing on what is important in your life? Well, the best part of the story is to be able to report tonight that Phil Chandler is now 100% cancer-free. Just last week, his doctors at the James Cancer Center told him to, quote, get out and don't come back. And for <laughs> Phil, this is the first month he's had without a doctor's appointment since January of 2008. Wow. Oh, he's such an inspiration and cancer-free. Those are great words. I remember them as well. But is there anything else? We've seen him do so much. What else does he have on his list? Has he completed that? Well, yeah, he's still got a couple of things. Phil really wants to meet baseball great Yogi 
Yogi Berra. Well, that's appropriate because, wow. of course, Yogi, among the many quotes that are attributed to him, of course, it ain't over till it's over, which is uh, <laughs> fitting in this case. I also, watching that story, I think of the country song, Live Like You're Dying. Yes. It's a good lesson Came for all mind. of us. Uh, extra content on the website, I There is extra content. Uh, Phil had such insight on life from his battle with cancer. I wanted to put his wow. entire interview on WDTN.com. You can just head to our website, find my story, and go from there. Good stuff. Oh, what an amazing guy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.